Greetings all. Last Outrider here, bringing you the next part of Who Are the Black Legion? This time we're talking about Horus' last son. It is impossible to tell the tale of the Black Legion without also telling the tale of Abaddon, the last and most gifted of Horus' generals, greatest of the champions of chaos and favored of the dark gods. Abaddon would one day become the doom of the Imperium. Ezekiel Abaddon's story began at the birth of the Imperium, during the time of the Great Crusade, as the Emperor fought to reclaim the stars. It was a time of legendary warriors and epic deeds, when the Space Marine Legions earned glory, vanquishing alien worlds and bringing the rule of the Emperor to a galaxy grown fragmented. During this vast endeavor, Abaddon stood at the side of the Primarch Horus Lupercal and his Lunar Wolves. As captain of the First Company, Abaddon followed Horus as they forged a path of enlightenment into the Void. A talented warrior in his own right, Abaddon was one of the Primarch's favored generals, privy to the secret councils of the Morneval, Horus's innermost circle. Abaddon led countless charges of the Luna Wolves, his company always in the thick of the fighting, tearing apart aliens with chain blades, bolt rounds, and even their bare hands. During the Ulanor crusade against the orc warlord Urlach, Horus and Abaddon led a spear-tip assault against the warlord himself. While Horus traded bone-shattering blows with the giant Greenskin, Abaddon and the rest of the assault force were engulfed by Urlach's hulking bodyguards. When Horus finally slew Urlach, he returned to find Abaddon alone, had survived, covered in gore, with only the dead for company. With this great victory, Horus was able to crush the orcs and shatter their tribes. In honor of the War Master's success during the Ulanor Crusade, the Emperor renamed the Lunar Wolves the Sons of Horus that they may always bear the glorious name of their Primarch. Abaddon favored his Primarch above all others, revering him as a beloved father. Whilst the Emperor was a distant figure, Abaddon was ever at the side of Horus. The two warriors watching each other's backs as they strode across blood-spattered battlefields and into the flaming hulls of crippled warships. In the captain's eyes, Horus could do no wrong, and was the greatest of all the Space Marine Primarchs. When the Emperor himself named Horus War Master, it was a moment of extreme pride for Abaddon, to him, Horus's superiority was self-evident, and, by extension, the sons of Horus were superior to all other legions, rightful leaders of the Emperor's armies. Tragically, such glories did not last. A short time later, Horus was mortally wounded on the remote, swamp-choked moon orbiting Davin. In a skirmish with an unknown foe, the War Master was pierced by a cursed blade, its baleful malediction taking root within his flesh. Abaddon keenly felt this blow, as if he, instead of his Primarch, 
had been wounded. Though he could not know, this was to be the point at which the sons of Horus would forever be sundered from the emperor's side. Desperate to save the war master's life, the sons of Horus and their allies took their master to one of Davin's warrior lodges and its ancient priestly order. Unknown to Abaddon, these priests were servants of the dark gods. With warp magics and obscene rituals, the priests fed the hatred in Horus's heart, the feeling that he had been betrayed and abandoned by the emperor. Though his body was saved, his soul was lost. Thus did Abaddon's effort to save his Primarch, damn Horus and his legion forever, and lay the foundations for not only the great betrayal, but also the countless dark days that followed. There you go. That alone should let a lot of people think about where the Horus heresy came from. Because next time, we're actually going to talk about the Horus heresy. What happened after that? So let's be clear. Horus never betrayed the emperor. Okay? He didn't wake up one day and said, False emperor! Everybody must die! Let the galaxy burn! Blah, 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 blah. Never happened. Horus was killed by the anathema. That's the sword slash weapon that struck him. It was also the same weapon that was used to kill the emperor and before he was brought back to life by Malkador on the Golden Throne. Um, this weapon is basically some ultimate weapon created by we don't know who, some Xenos race, we're guessing, the old ones probably. Basically, whatever it touches, it kills. It changes itself to become whatever it needs to kill the thing it touches. Horus was scratched, scratched by this thing, by... I think one of Nurgle's uh, uh, unclean ones. And he died, basically. And this whole thing was a plan of chaos, knowing that Abaddon would do anything, anything, to bring Horus back to life. So they brought him to basically a chaos temple on Devon, which... At that point in time, nobody knew what chaos was. Somehow, they brought Horus back. They brought Horus's body back to life. Let's be clear. As they said, his soul was destroyed. You can call it like a partial ascension at that point. What came back to life was not Horus. It was something else. It was a chaos, corrupted, warped creature. And this thing is what caused the great betrayal. So that's not Horus anymore. Not by any reasonable definition of what Horus was. There was no great enlightenment. He didn't learn about some lie. There was no secret that he discovered at a future date, and suddenly the emperor, you know, was, was secretly doing something. No. All of those theories are thrown out with this incident. Horus died. His body was brought back to life. Uh, his soul was destroyed, and that led the Horus heresy. 
and this was done by Abaddon alone. Basically, he could not accept the concept of Horus dying. He was willing to pay any price to bring him back to life. Whereas the rest of the sons of Horus would have been able to accept it. So there you go. That that is really the long and short of it. Uh, I don't know. I don't know how many other ways I can I can say it other than that. You know where the Horus heresy came from at this time. It was a chaos plot. It is a chaos plot. It isn't a real thing. So some of you chaos players out there who are hoping that in some way chaos can actually redeem itself, that maybe this really is a false emperor, or there really is some conspiracy in the Imperium or something like that, that no, 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 no. Chaos, uh, chaos is just chaos. It's, it's just an ugly thing. So until next time, we're going to go into the details then of what this new Horus, this corrupted Horus, does when he came back to life. Until then, bye.